Imagine, John, you, you're searching for a car. You walk into a car dealership and I greet you and hey, hey, how you know? My name's Stefan. Welcome. Um, how can I help you today? What are you looking for? And your, your response is, you know, hey, my family's getting bigger. We have another one on the way and it's time for a minivan. Okay, cool. Well, you came to the right place. Unfortunately, John, I don't know too much about minivans. I'm like a sports car guy. My uh, business partner, Brian over here, minivan expert. He's had three himself. He's going to be your best bet to talk to any options. Bear with me one second. Let me go guard Brian. And he's going to be a good resource. He's going to make this whole car shopping thing easy for you. When I walk away and go get Brian, what are you feeling? Yeah, man. I'm so glad this guy helped me. And he actually, he actually, yeah. he directed me to the person that actually is the expert here. That's what a good ISA does. How you doing, everyone? Thanks for joining the Beyond the Sale podcast. And uh, this week, it's, I'm super excited to have Stefan DiLorenzo. Stefan is the the director and leader of the ISA department at the Beer Home Team. Uh, I believe that they're in San Diego, California, and they service that market of of Orange County. Is that that's not Orange County? That's San Diego. San Diego. San yeah. Diego. Okay. Yep. Okay. Perfect. And uh, I've taken, we know on our team, we've used Stefan's training and we find it very helpful and useful with our ISAs and sales department. And I'm just really excited just to kind of have an in-depth conversation with you, Stefan, and just go through what um, what you guys do there and see if you know we can share that with our audience. Yeah. First of all, thanks for having me. Super excited to uh, be able to share some insight into uh, my thought process, my, my role, and kind of how I go about not only coaching, but um, you know, maximizing the productivity for our team. So excited to be here. And thanks again for having me. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's my pleasure. So Stefan, let's just start off with just, um, for the audience sake, like I know how big the team is that you, um, sir, that you're a part of, what does that, what does it look like? What is the number of agents, number of ISAs? What is, the, what is the whole team structure? Yeah. So we are actively recruiting agents. So that number is consistently growing. I believe we have about 55 to 60 agents on our team. Um, we are growing our ISA team right now. We're running with the, uh, two ISAs. Um, so we're, we will be looking for to fill one more seat. Uh, we have a whole operations team, a marketing team. Uh, so we're, we're very well, well structured. The great beauty with, with our team is you're not wearing a juggling a bunch of different hats. So everyone can really be a professional and, and increase their skill set in the job that they're really focused on. So we really work as a team. We we embrace that team concept, and that builds our productivity. Just in that past 24 months, we've had over a thousand sides. So uh, we're, we're number one team in San Diego, and and our volume is is pretty big. So we need to keep keep uh, the motor running essentially. That's huge. So a thousand sides in 24 months. That's that's awesome. Um, and then I, I know that in the past, uh, what I've heard was you're, you have a seven, seven figure marketing budget that's, it? that's directed at the ISA department and answering those phone calls and that sort of thing. I know, um, Dan does a, a lot of marketing billboards, that sort of thing is, are right. you guys still doing that sort of thing right now in this market? Absolutely. Yeah. So we have, we have, um, a huge presence, right? We want, we want our, our name and our recognition, uh, to be out there, right? If somebody's thinking of, of buying or selling in San Diego County, our name should be in the conversation. So uh, we we pepper them with marketing, right? In fact, it's kind of a funny quick story. We had somebody call the other day and ask to not have Dan's face plastered all around town. And I told them I'll pass the compliment over to the marketing team. Shows that, shows yeah. that we're doing a good job. But yeah, we have billboards. We, we're on the back of buses. We're on a couple different radio stations. Uh, we have the most trafficked agent-owned site in the county as well, San Diego Um uh, so we we have a lot of different channels. Plus we have relationships with you know referral platforms such as Homelight and things like that and uh, Zilla Flex. So so we have a, a good channel of leads coming through and they're all getting funneled through the ISA team. Perfect. Perfect. I love that. Um okay and then so let's just go back. So I know that I believe that you were the first ISA on the team, correct? I was actually like the third. The third. Okay. Uh, so they had one ISA before he was there for a while. They had another one. He moved on. When I came in, this would be six years in March now, uh, seven years in March almost. Um, 
I helped build the, the department, right? So at, at that time, we they they realized there's something here. We could build off of this. We had a, a team of up of five at one point, and really just uh, allowing the marketing team to put the the effort into creating those leads, knowing that they're coming into something that's gonna actually work them right that the, there's a there's a backstop there's something that's that's going to be catching those leads um so it's really how we're structured and and I've, I've seen a lot of growth within the the six years that i've been here and and a lot of my previous jobs have helped me be successful in my current job as well so it, it's really kind of helped piggyback off of me that's awesome so i just want to jump in then so like so for someone that uh like myself who's who wants to grow an isa department and structuring that so it could um, to be the most successful. Um, what was the evolution from sure you getting on like getting on the team, understanding how to how to talk to buyers and sellers, that sort of thing, and love to go more into that as well. But but how, what is in terms of the evolution from when you started to now where you're at, and how are you structuring the day? How how did you create that department, and then um, how how are you how are you growing it? Yeah. So essentially. We'll- I mean, I, I was kind of like a, a plug in a, at a hole when I first started, right? I had other agents that were training me and I was kind of learning by the seat of my own pants, right? Um, now going through it, you know, we understand like what it takes to nurture a lead that, you know, if a lead isn't materializing in an appointment or, or activity right away, you need to have some sort of a nurturing process. So again, you're consistently top of mind and you're always coming from a place of curiosity of in nurturing instead of a place of agenda drivenness. And that's where the ISA department does a really good job. It has a separation and not uh, from an agent actually, because at the end of the day, John, an agent's always gonna be thinking of their next deal, getting somebody into showings or into into escrow so, so their next commission check comes. And ISA is focused on creating value and setting up an appointment. So their buy-in and their vocabulary is a little bit different. So what I've realized is, there needs to be a separation in between agent and ISA. And even if you're an agent prospecting, you need to then turn into your own ISA and you need to eliminate that side breath and, and your pacing towards wanting to sell a house and more pacing towards creating value in a buyer or seller appointment. So you can in sense, hire yourself and get a client. Uh, you know, when I've realized in this six years of being on the team, is the successful agents realize that a transaction is is a mile, a four lap mile, right? Those ones that try to get their mile done in one or two laps, sometimes they're successful, but over time they're failing because they're not getting the buy-in from the client. So what we've realized is if you take that ISA mentality and do a four lap mile, get that buy-in, get that, that wantingness to want to show up for the appointment, then you crush the appointment and create value. Now you have a client and somebody that's committed to working with. And you can go through the, either the listing of their home or the showing, uh, showing of homes to get them into the transaction. You know, I was just having this conversation with someone. It's like in, with an agent that comes from car sales, and he's like, "I'm so used to closing the the deal right away." Yeah. And I'm like, and I'm like, we're talking about how the real estate transaction goes and how we're closing more towards you know bringing value, but closing towards outcomes. There's there's a lot of different outcomes along the way. Like you're talking about the four lap mile. There's a lot of different outcomes we have to close on. And bring confidence to the client and value before they're going to say yes. So, right. Yeah. They want they want certainty, right? And one of the things that we always love to say is, you know, John, we're going to make this real estate thing easy for you, right? It, it, that it, allows, it alleviates the the pressure, right? You can literally feel the weight coming off of people's shoulders when you say that line, right? So they they're more they're more likely you're you're getting their buy in on a conscious rapport level, and they're realizing that you're the authority and the expert that can get them to their goal. Yeah. So you, you went over some of the training, like this, there's a seven step process that an ISA has to go through when they're hired, um, or, or whatever, or this through the, the, um, the process of them learning. Yeah. Maybe this is an, an agent too. Yeah. I think it started, started off with just, you know, the conversation and then it then moved to a point where, and to skills and rapport and, and understanding all that stuff. But then it moved to a point where it was really interesting for me is, and I was having this conversation today with my ISA department in preparation for this call is that you talked about fear. There's, there's, there are six before they move it to activities and results. There's, there's, they're going to have some kind of fear or trepidation yep. now that they know this. Can you, can you elaborate more on like yeah, what that is? Yeah. So what you were leading to is like eight steps for success. Right. And, 
how that works is I always like to train to get somebody into the mindset of what's needed to be successful before they even pick up a phone. So the eight steps for success that I teach upon, uh, commitment wide repetition, habit, skill, confidence. The sixth thing though is fear. And a lot of people are taken back by that when I present this. Um, and then it kind of makes sense when I break it down. If you look this is a perfect time, January 26th, right? What happens January 1st is everybody has fitness goals. They want to, you know, diet, get into the gym more. Around January 26th, that gym's starting to look a little more empty, right? It's because people are fearful of the new lifestyle that's created, right? They're so used to what they've been doing in the past that that change is creating fear. What you need to do once that fear cre creeps in and you start to you start to question, is this the lifestyle I want? Is this the direction I want to go? You need to up your activities because that's where you're going to push through and where you see the results at the end of the day. So that's where it really brings in. A lot of people get, get blinded by that fear spot. They don't see it coming because things were going well, their commitment, their habit, their repetition, their skill set is all developing and they're, they're loving it. But then all of a sudden it's just like, shit, like this is, it is a turning point in their life. Like they, this habit is going to become a new lifestyle. And then they either revert back to what they've previously done because they're fearful of the new activity or they push through with more activity to get, get to the end result. So that's why I always, I, I spend an hour training these eight steps before even teaching them what to do to pick up the phone, because it's so important to get your mindset right. So you can maximize your activity. And, and I see that too. It's like, it's, and it's, I love the way you put that because I didn't really, I didn't think about it that way, but you're right. It's just like, there's patterns, like the patterns that we have, and we always revert back to those patterns. And now we're open, starting a new pattern. And the idea is to keep just doubled down on the activity. Absolutely. Keep going. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. You also go through like, um, what I thought was, was, was really great. The interpretation of it. There's three types of buyers and then, and how are you talking with those three types of buyers and the way that you are buyers and sellers, there's the first time home buyer and seller, there's the experienced buyer and seller, and then there's the investor. Right. And I, I love the conversation that you were having around, well, there's different conversations and there's different things that those buyers and sellers are going to be, for lack of a better word, almost like, um, find value, I guess, or, or triggered by find value. Yeah. Essentially what it's, there's three different, yeah, you know, if you're a first time home buyer experience or an investor, your experience, how you're programmed is different. What you're anticipating is going to be different. And the words that are going to trigger, trigger, motivate, or attach to you are different. So if your vocabulary isn't changing to coincide to who you're talking to, you're, you're making it harder on yourself. So I'm not going to use the same words that I would to a first time home buyer that I would to an investor or to an experienced home buyer. If I'm talking to a a first time home buyer and I start talking about like the escrow period and contingencies and how important it is, uh, you know, to, to get your request for repairs and they're, they're going to be lost. They're going to have no idea what I'm talking about because it's so far past what their experience is in, in that realm. So that your vocabulary then shifts to match who you're talking to. And then what happens is that person realizes one, you're, you're an expert because you know what you're talking about. Your conscious rapport is firing. But more importantly, their unconscious rapport is triggered because you're speaking the words that make sense to them. You're talking their love language. So not only do they feel that you're the expert, but they also, they also enjoy speaking to you. So you're firing on both levels and that helps then get, get that buy-in to want to get to the appointment. Cool. Yeah. That, that makes a lot of sense. And then, um, let's, I'll shift gears in, with regards to back to like your, your position where you are right now and ahead of ISAs, hiring ISAs, looking for other, for ISAs. We've, we've been through a process of, we've had a lot of turnover. We've had some turnover, I guess. Uh -huh. um, we've had, we have a few successful ISAs on our team and we're always looking for the, the, you know, the person that can really wants to, um, up their game, wants to be, um, you know, is, is dr driven, driven to, you know, to be better and all that sort of stuff that we're, that, um, we all are trying to do. Right. Um, but I, I guess we're, when we're hi hiring, what does your hiring process look like in terms of, are you personality profiling them? Are you, what is it? What is a good, um, we want to know their skill sets there, right? 
but it's also important that they're a cultural fit for us, right? So we have core values that our team um, lives by, mindset of abundance, everyone a leader, gritty, always improving and self-responsible. So you got to match into those core values, right? And then we also want to make sure that you're, you're fit for the position that you know that are, are you, are you able to do the job? Are you, ca are you capable of doing it? Do you want to do it? Right. Um, so we, we have a uh, interview process where, you know, it's standard, you send your resume, you have an initial interview, you get a feeling where if you're a good fit from there, you would, uh, come in, you would meet with the head of your department. Um, and they'd go through kind of the, their interview exercise. Uh, with you, and then they'll bring in somebody that's ahead of another to meet with if they go if they pass that to give a second opinion. Um, and from there, you know, we, we either we make a decision to bring you on or not. Um, as far as the ISA position goes, I give a question a lot of where where's the best place to find them? I'm having trouble finding them, having trouble retaining them. Uh, actually, one of my coaching students who who I worked with for a while um, brought a, a good. Um, idea that they do is they have like a little like QR type business card, business card. Uh, you've been identified as a perfect uh, prospect for our team or however they worded it, right? Like a, a talent for our team. It's how they said you've been identified as a, a, a potential talent for our team. S scan this to learn more blah, blah, blah. It's, it essentially brings you to the team, like maybe like a little video or whatever. So they're, their team members keep those with them. And reason being is for ISAs, especially where myself included came from the hospitality industry. Right. You know, I was, I was always in sales, but where I was actually taken from, I worked at a high end restaurant here in San Diego. And one of my regulars sister was, is our CFO. Um, uh, so I got kind of recruited by that. I always tell people that that bartender, that server, that's, you know, energetic, that's personable, that's good at sales, going to be a really good ISA, right? They're, they're going to be good at it. They're sealing for a, a in the hospitality industry is there, you can open up a new avenue for them and they can still utilize their skill set. That's where I was taken from. That's where we've had a couple of good ISAs in the past. And then the one that we have right now is awesome. Adrian Alonzo is amazing. So good. He came from debt collection. So he, he was making tough, tough calls, right? But he was good at it. He was good on the phone. These are vacation calls for him now, right? So he's, he's excited to come every day, has great conversations. He's, a, he's awesome. He buys in, open to feedback, uh, and really starting to see some good opportunities from those type of, uh, environments to pull from. So are you finding that, um, having someone with some kind of phone experience, sales experience? Um, I mean, I, I think that I've heard that before too, like hospitality or, or, you know, waitress, wait, waiter, um, bartender. I think they're, they understand conversations with people. They're, they're somewhat, um, interested, you know, they, they, they work hard. You want, if we're an I, if we're talking ISAs, you want people like people, people, right? Like you want someone that, that can have a conversation, like that guy that you, you, he's your friend, but you bring him to a party where he doesn't know anyone. And if you lose him for 20 minutes, you're not worried about it, right? Like they can hold their own. They can strike up a conversation. They'll be fine. Like I think you kind of know, like the type of personality I'm going for. They don't, doesn't mean they've had to be on the phone ever. I could teach them how to talk on the phone. It's the same thing. Uh, but you need someone that has a little bit of personality, right? That cares about what they're doing. That realizes the importance of the position that they have is multi-layered, right? For we talked about it earlier, the marketing team is dependent on us, right? There's agents that are, that are dependent on us to help keep their pipeline full. It's cool, John, if you're out and you're showing homes and all of a sudden you get a notification of another appointment is booked for you. Why are you, why are you working on something like that keeps the engine moving, right? So totally. And then plus, if you're able to do your job, your why and why you're doing it, and that, you know, your reason for wanting to be successful and make money is now that more, much more attainable by you helping others as well. That's why I love the ISA position. I, I came on and I wanted to be an agent. I, in fact, in my interview told Dan, who's your top agent? How many homes does he sell? Cool. In a year, I'm going to be that guy. Like I was kind of like, co like confident about it. Um, Never became an agent. Why is that? I, I I just love the ISA position. I like the structure of it. I like the fact that I can uh, I can help others grow while helping myself grow. Um, and then the coaching avenue of it as well just it, it ignited a, a huge spark in me as well, and then then opened up some other avenues for me as well. I, I mean, coming from a, a sports background and always being like the captain of the team that I've had, like I found kind of like a, a that translation here um i think part of the structure of it too 
um, not having to be like an on-call employee, right? I can be off on the weekends and I'm really big on family. So I, w- I want to make sure I spend time with my 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 wife, my kid, and, and we have another one on the way. And I, I've just found a really good sweet spot. Yeah, I, I understand that too. It's like for, for me as as I'm getting further along in the business, it's I'm, I'm realizing that it's um, how much more, how, how nice it is to have a predictable schedule to be in, in my office every day making phone calls or, or not having to go out and be on somebody else's time, but be on my time. And, and I'm also, it's, it's like also there's, um, there, there's, there's a target too. I can still have that target and I can still, you know, meet that target, but I'm actually in my office. I can go out and get coffee. I can That's you know, it. schedule my time, go pick up my kids. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a good, a nice situation. Yeah. yeah. And not to say that they're not, not bashing like an agent schedule or anything. They are not to say like, maybe a year from now, I'm like, you know what? Like, let's, let's start selling some houses, right? Like I always kind of have that on a little bit of the back of my mind. Uh, but right. I, I, in fact, I, I took a, another position with the team, kind of took myself off of making phone calls, got back into to the ISA role after like seven, eight months. Right. Like I just, you know, it's, it, I, I find a good spot in it. And I, I love the fact that if I'm good at my job, I help others, um, obtain their goals as well like I, I i take a lot of pride in that i, I really do in fact i got a text i, I started at i i'm not good at naming things so don't judge the name but uh prospecting boot camp is what i call it right for our agents um kind of like a uh um four week two sessions a week essentially what you you had more towards agents though that yours the one that i did for that you uh you had was i say this is more towards agents how to help them prospect as an agent right Three sessions in, I got a text from uh, one of the agents on our team, Stefan. I've implemented everything that we've learned so far. I called all my old leads that I've gotten, and I booked three appointments for myself. I have two showing scheduled with three of those people already. Like this, this stuff works. So that for me is like a bigger reward than me personally booking the appointments, right? Because I'm helping now share a skill set that's helping others grow, right? And and it, it, I take reward in that. I love the position that I have, and you know, I. I book the appointments myself too. And, and I'll, I'll make sure that I eat a bend of it as well. So. Yeah. And you know, and the reason why we were at this conversation, because I took that class, I was, I, I've been through sales training before too. And just the, some of the interpretation of what we've, what we somewhat are doing already, but like the, how we made it more clear for me as an agent, because we, as an agent, we're doing ISA work too, which is inside sales instead of outside sales. Right. So we're, so it's, right. So it was, it was really, yeah, it was, it was very helpful. The interpretation of, of the process and always is getting, you know, a deeper understanding or a different perspective on what, even what we're, we're already doing is just helpful, um, in so many facets. Right. Well, people, people, the thing that like, I've been lucky enough with the previous jobs and with my education background and psychology minor and a lot of classes I've had in regards to that is people are programmed a certain way in a situation no matter what like if i asked you like what your favorite italian restaurant is you're programmed to respond a certain way because of something that you've experienced or something that you've heard something that you've read um or something like something in those lines in real estate people are programmed to to have a, an interpretation to something interest rates inventory pricing they're programmed to have some sort of thoughts to that so our job is to get back to the how they're programmed. Why is it like that? Is it, is it a self-experience? Is it something that somebody's told them? Is it news that they've read? And then we reprogram. I love that. And, and that's one of the questions I was unsure about as I was going back. It, we were talking about, I think this dovetails into that or this, we're talking about the same thing. There's three different reasons why people buy homes, right? And I think you said something about like it was market-driven, agent-driven. Those are three types of deals, right? So people are people are always looking for a good deal. Got it. And I always love like my response to that is great, John. I love getting people deals. Did you know that there's three different types of deals in real estate? What type of deal are you looking for? Uh, well, I want to save. I want to save the. You know, I just don't want to overpay. Okay, so you're looking for a market driven deal. So currently, right now, how our how we're getting deals for our clients is by creating inventory for them. So there's less of it, there's less competition. Then the asking price has a little bit of negotiation since they don't, they're not into multiple counters. Also, we're creating mortgage driven deals for our clients right now as well. And what I mean by that is with interest rates being in the fives, 
based on lender approval and seller seller approval, we're able to get um, a buy down on that rate. And then you go into storytelling mode. This is where if you're in the ISA Facebook group, or it's, which I hope you're in, I have. Um, I've, I've been posting videos uh, once or twice a week. The last video I posted was how good of a storyteller are you? If you're on a team, you should be sharing your wins with other team members. Mindset of abundance, actually one of our core values. So Saeed on our team just shared a story about how his clients he was working with were priced out of the market. That the home that they were looking for, what their monthly payment was going to be, which just wasn't aligned. So they felt they had to wait. Saeed got to work. He found them the right home, was able to get a 2-1 buy down for them and save them $1,000 a month on their monthly payment for the first year. That allowed them to get into that home that they wanted to. This is a success story that we're able to share. So as I'm talking to you about a good deal, I can go into that kind of storytelling mode and it has a little more weight to it. And again, it's getting that buy-in to wanting them have their have their appointment. Now, John, I don't know if this is the situation that would be applicable for you. I don't know your finances. I don't know where you're looking for, but I wanted to share that story with you so you understand that there's deals out there, that our team is able to win in this marketplace, that our clients aren't just sitting on the sidelines trying to tie in the market. We're getting options for them. Love that. So so you're so you're having the team share it at, at the, the huddle or a sales meeting. Yep. And then the ISA can go out and they can they can or you can have that conversation with the with the client of like, hey, look, this is a situation that we just experienced, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and, and they're like, oh, okay, got it. And that, yes. that third party validation sort of thing. Well, and it also does another thing too, it is it shows to that client, like the value of working with somebody on a team opposed to like a solo agent, mm-hmm. right? Like a solo agent is, is on an Island. They're just, everything they do is what they feel like the best thing is, right? Like they, like if they're countering, there's no second opinion because who are they asking? They're a solo agent. Our agents all the time, hey, you know, I, I live in this counter. What do you suggest? How would you respond? Like, there's collaboration there. And what that does in turn is it protects their client and always keeps their best interests in mind and allows them to have the best options moving forward. So, I mean, I'll wear this beer home team thing. Like, I'll, I'm proud of the fact that that's like, I'm, I have that team behind me that, that has like all that skill set and can really help navigate this perceived difficult market and help our clients win. I love that too, is because a lot of times the ISAs, they, they, they think, well, I'm not there or I, I'm not either going to be virtual an ISA or, or they might be an ISA that's not out in the field, right? They're not in the field. And they right. might, they might be thinking, well, um, you know, I had this experience. They feel like they can't share the experience of the team. They feel like the client cares about that. Like they care that they're not the one selling the property. They're not the one showing them the property. I guess, I guess that probably really helps with that sort of situation. And have, and have you ever experienced that with some of the ISAs thinking of like, Hey, look, I'm having a hard time talking with them because I'm not the one actually showing the property. I'm not the one dealing with them. Yeah. I mean, there is a little bit of that. And frankly, sometimes when the ISA does too good of a job that the client's like, wait, you're not the one that I'm working with. Right. Um, so there's a little bit of that to it. Uh, it. It's just about buying into it and realizing you're an extension of that other person. Like all of our wins are together. I let, my favorite, like how I correlate mindset of abundance is somebody else's wins doesn't necessarily mean your failures, right? It's an opportunity for you to, to learn and to share that story and be successful like them and, and mirror that. So that's what we're doing. And kind of in the lines with on this topic like with the handoff, we create value in that as, as a lot of times I, I even got a question from, from another coaching student that asked me, how do you maintain that separation from ISA to agent where they're like the agents, like the bartender and the ISA is the bar back, right? Like the, the, you see like the, the bartender gets like the glory of the fa- the forward facing, um, that type of thing. We don't Dan beer, our CEO, he does a great job of making, we're all business partners, right? And what I, what I love, the analogy that I love to tell is imagine, John, you, you're you searching for a car. You walk into a car dealership and I greet you and hey, hey how are you know, my name's Stefan, welcome. Um, how can I help you today? What are you looking for? And your, your response is, you know, hey, my family's getting bigger. We got another one on the way and it's time for a minivan. Okay, cool. Well, you came to the right place. Unfortunately, John, I don't know too much about minivans. I'm like a sports car guy. My uh, business partner, Brian over here, minivan expert. He's had three himself. He's going to be your best bet to talk to any options. 
bear with me one second. Let me go grab Brian, and he's going to be a good resource. He's going to make this whole car shopping thing easy for you. When I walk away and go get Brian, what are you feeling? Yeah, man, I'm so glad this guy helped me. And he actually, he actually, yeah. he directed me to the person that actually is the expert here. That's what a good ISA does. I don't like tell them I'm not an agent. I'm not holding it off that information either, right? But I make it sound like you tell me, oh, I'm looking Pacific Beach. So the, uh, it's a part of town here in San Diego. Oh, awesome. We do a ton of business there. Actually, one of my business partners lived there and he's very successful helping clients future pace that handoff, right? Now, tell me, what is it about Pacific Beach that's important to you? Why are you looking there? About what? Now, when I go two, three minutes later and I go to the close, now, John, you know how I mentioned earlier my business partner focuses in Pacific Beach? Where you're going to see the most value is let's set up a time that the two of you can get together. So that way you can have the best resource from our team and he can make this whole thing really easy for you. When would you be free to meet with? That person's more excited to want to meet with them now, right? If it's that handoff is done correctly. So- there's a skill and there's an art form in that. Um, and we've done a really good job of doing that. And that's why our show rate is always above like 70% of what appointments booked to see um, that are actually qualified, not just seen. Um, and it's because we get that buy-in, right? We want that person to show up just like we want to show up for that. Yeah, I, lo- I love that. The, the You mentioned something about like there's you know three things that you want to do before a close. And we use it as well. And I, um, I think we were talking about we, we want to, you want them to, to love our resources. I think that was the first one. We want them to trust us and then they want us to trust the company, right? Yep. And and you went, so with regards to loving your resources, like w- what are you sharing with the client with regard, maybe some digital assets or something of that sort, but also um, I, I guess maybe, I think you also mentioned like some rewards and some accolades as well. But yeah, so we have a high note link that we send to any appointment that we book that essentially summarizes our resources guide. It has like a culture video. You get to meet, you get to see the team and it's us like having fun in the office, cool culture video. Then it goes into like our resources. And if you're a buyer, you get one that's essentially talks about our off-market blitz and access to San Diego's seller list and how our negotiation skills are and, um, and, and essentially what it would look like in working with us as a buyer. Then it also goes into, if you were a client of ours, what happens as you're part of the beer home team family? We want a future pace that you got to deal. So in that sense, you have action, options to our client embeds, um, our client perks program, which is a website that you can go and, and register like all sorts of like party supplies and things like that. Um, so we're pattern interrupters. We know that not other agents send stuff like that or have other stuff like that. So it's again, it's about getting buy-in and wanting people to show up for the appointment. And showing that we're professional, we've done this before, we have a process, even all of our agents, like if we book a Zoom appointment for them, it's not like, you know, when you have a Zoom link and it's like zoom.cx, it's like a weird link. All of our agents have bought a domain name that have changed it, like yours would say, John Carroll will be your home team. Mm -hmm. So I would would click on that Zoom link, it would say it like that, and it would take you right to the Zoom meeting. It just looks a little more professional, a little bit stands out a little bit more. They're all little tiny things that are done to... Tiny hit just swing big doors, as as John Chetlack says, right? Perfect. Uh, so so we follow that that mindset. Perfect, perfect. And then and then trusting your company is. I know you you mentioned there's you know it's the conversation and we use this as well. Is this is like talking about reviews, talking about where we're the one percent of of all agents in the area, we're the top one yes. percent of of the agents here in the area. Um, sharing that kind of, I think just sharing that story with them instead of talking about the the nitty gritty and like three bedrooms, two baths, like color of the house, what you're looking for, but getting their buy-in with regards to, Hey, look guys, we're going to be, we're going to make this thing really easy for you. We're, we're the top, you know, top agents in the area. Um, you know, we have 155 star reviews from clients like yourself that we've helped accomplish their goals and objectives. Um, just to have you go there, take a look at those, kind of get a feel and flavor for some of the results we provide. Something like that allows them to get more buy-in too. And it allows you to, 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 for them to have more trust as a team. And then also with the agent too. Absolutely. So we do a couple things at the end of our, our call. One is the trial close. And what that is, is getting the buy-in from the, from the person on the other line for the appointment and allowing them to present any objections that would prevent them from working with you. Um, after that, I'll always say something like, awesome. Well, I've, I've enjoyed speaking with you. I'm going to send you an email, has information. But when you have five minutes or so, feel free to Google be your own team. Poke around, read some reviews, see what you see. Um, anyone listening to this when we're done, just do that yourself. Google Beer Home Team. 
San Diego real estate, see what comes up. Look at the reviews. There's five star reviews that out of, you know, uh, every quarter of the County and, uh, we do a good job. We wanted to highlight that. We want somebody to look at that and be like, oh, wow, like these people know their stuff. Um, cause what happens then is I call it the UCLA effect and, you know, bear with me. We're here in Southern California. Sure. So pl plug your college in. But what happens when you apply to a college job is, um, you either get it or you don't. And just because you get in, doesn't mean you're going to go there. And just because you apply, doesn't mean that you get to go there. So I like to bring that kind of thought process into a close for the appointment. I want that person to treat this as a college application that they need to show up and prove that they're worth working with us. And we need to show that we're worth working for them. Uh -huh. That way, like, do you ever miss your dentist appointment or your doctor's Never. appointment? No. Uh -huh. You build your day around that. That should happen here. Somebody should be building their day around the appointment that they have with your team. No, I'm sorry. I have an appointment with the beer home team at two o'clock via Zoom. I'll be done at two thirty. Like your schedule is built around that. When your when your phone call and your prospecting is done correctly and your close and all that, we get that that buy in and that show up. Perfect. The is the the day in the life of an ISA on the beer home team. Their schedule, how yeah. how they're following up with leads, um, how are they nurturing leads? I know that you guys are calling past clients too, and I think I I heard something in this last time I was listening to it that I didn't hear the first time. You're calling, are you calling agents as well? So we, we sometimes, yes, we'll okay. call it like some follow-up recruiting, things like that, question answering, not so much anymore. We do call past clients though. Okay. Anybody that's left us a raving review, of, uh, nine or higher on our survey score, we'll call them quarterly again, keeping top of mind, inviting them to the client perks, things like that, asking for referrals, reviews. Uh, but the day of the life of an ISA eight to five Monday through Friday. Uh, every other day you'll be on opportunity time for four hours. Uh, so for example, today, Adrian came in 8 AM. He's going to be on opportunity time from 8 AM to noon. That means any inbound lead that comes into our lead, whether it's via phone or email is going to be directed right to Adrian first. He has 15, 10, 15 minutes to claim that if he doesn't, somebody else, anybody else that has access to it will, will claim it. But essentially he's working new leads and everything um, for the first four hours. Um, after that, you know, he'll go grab his lunch. And then from there, he's nurturing the database. So we work off a follow-up boss with smart lists. So he'll be clearing his smart list, nurture zero to 30, uh, 31 through 90, 91 through 365. He'll clear all that. He'll clear his closed lost, meaning any appointments he's booked previously uh, that didn't materialize in a deal. He'll call and try to re-engage in those. Um, and then also there's an ISA nurture tag that we utilize. So agents that have a certain amount of people in their pipeline can utilize this tag, which is essentially them saying, Hey, John, I need help with, uh, nurturing this lead and getting them to a appointment. This is in your world. Kick it back to me when they're ready and they'll clear that list. So their day is pretty much consisting of that. Of course, any meetings, like we have a team meeting, a sales team meeting on Tuesday. We role play every day as well. Um, every single day, um, we'll role play. Um, and then we have like a company meet, uh, department meeting once a week. Um, and yeah, that's, that's pretty much, uh, the day on their life. Interesting. So, so, and the idea is to keep them as fresh as possible for the new, new leads. So four hours, and then we switch over to another ISA who's handling new leads for the, or agents or agents. So yeah, some agents will sign up for, for that as well. Okay. So an agent can be an ISA too, and handle new leads coming in as well. If they sign up Absolutely. for it. Yep. Yep. They have to be certified. Right. They, they'll go through a whole training process with me, um, up until a hot seat where I sit them down for 15 minutes and put them through some of the more difficult calls that they might get. Um, cause some of them are difficult. They're not all just, Hey, I saw your billboard. I want to list my house, which we do get. They're nice. Uh, but we get the other side of that as well. Um, so just learning how to, how to deal with it, how to take it at Egypt calling about one of our listings and things like that. So they'll get trained on that as well. But it's a levels thing. Once they've sold enough homes, they get opportunity there. They can build their business. It's a recruiting tool for Isaac, our head of agent growth to you. So got it. I love that. Yeah, that's, that's good. All right. Yeah. Well, Stefan, I, Hey, I, I appreciate you spending time with us. Yeah, I, I know absolutely. your time's valuable. Um, where can people, um, I know you offer courses and, and that sort of thing that were super helpful for, for us and our team and, and, and growing the ISA department as well as just for me as the agent, I know you said you're offering that now. 
How do people find that information? How do people connect with you? Yeah, so if you want to go to agentacademy.com, um, I'm just going to double check that that will, agentacademy.com um, will, will take you into there. Um, you can see uh, a list of a lot of the offerings that we have. I'm actually a, a um, platinum coach with them. So if you go under platinum coaches, the agentacademy.com, there's a, a whole curriculum for coaching. And then if you go under meet our platinum coaches, um, there's a whole little bio on myself, a um, little video, a little introduction from me, a little bit about my background. And there's an inquire now uh, option as well. I don't know if there's a chat in here. I can kind of, I can put that link. Yeah, go ahead. And then we'll add it to the bottom into the comments. We might be rolling out a group coaching off option in the future, but right now what we do, what I'm offering is a one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, what I mean by one-on-one, -on -one, it's me and your organization. So you can have just yourself as a team lead or a head agent or whatever, or whoever you want from there. The first week or two is pretty scripted in the sense that I'm going to kick it off and get you, get you guys going. But after that, I can't say where that training is going to go because I need to dive deep into your organization. I actually the reason it's one-on-one -on -one is because I want to look into how your leads are coming, who's calling, how everything's structured and where areas of opportunity are. And then the, the coaching will morph that. So it's going to be directly related for you and your organization and how we can increase productivity across the board. And that is a 12 week coaching session. I love that. Right. So oh, that's, that's awesome. That's, that's a lot of value there. So you, you actually go in, look into what they're doing, their systems and processes and see how you can make it better. Absolutely. And build them up. There's their scripting, their follow-up, their lead distribution, their handoffs, uh, their internal things, like how they're even their, their calendars and who has access to what and how they're booking things and what's done post appointment and everything in between. Um, it, it's, it's really good. I, I, I typically limit it to five coaching students at a time because of the work that I put into it. I want to make sure that I'm, I'm producing for you and you're, and getting you a return in your investment. So um, I've done it. I just finished up my, my five sessions uh, not too long ago. So I'll restart it here shortly. And the feedback and, and the productivity I've seen from those that have done it, I, I've been super proud of. I, I mean, I put a lot into it and I know that people invest in, into me and I want to make sure I deliver. But then when I see the back end results, um, it, it's crazy. It's really cool to see. That's awesome. That's awesome. And yeah, and, and my recommendation too, it's, it's been, we've seen, leaps and bounds in our business just from going through it. And, and actually we were having our ISAs go through just the, tr this is training that we went through before. So, so it's, yeah. Um, well, Hey, I, I really, I really appreciate it. Um, I know you're absolutely. It's been a pleasure. Absolutely. We'll see you soon. Okay. Bye-bye.